Well, welcome to Chess Center, everyone. International Master Danny Wrench here, coming at you from the Arizona sunset, alongside my trusty co-host, Mr. Sean McCoy. How you doing, Sean? Oh, it's brutal out here. I bet it is. It looks brutal out there. Well, before we get into the hot topics I just previewed, let's talk about the move of the week. Every week, we're going to be bringing you one of the best moves and the worst moves from the previous week of chess. And right here, we have Mr. Dennis Kismatulin versus Daniil Debove. And uh, Sean, what would you do in this position? Uh, I'd have to save the lady, uh, get her to somewhere on the board where she does some good. Oh, I think you and everybody else would have to do that, but not Mr. Kismatulin. He plays D takes E6. Boom. Uh. He's going to become a bachelor. He's, he's, he's parting with the lady. That's right. He's becoming a bachelor. And after knight takes e4, he gets a few checks. But you know what they say about a few checks? If it doesn't lead to mate, what good was it, right? And maybe we look at this position and say, that was definitely exciting, but was it really worth a queen sacrifice? Well, what do we think about when we think about the things that are long-term in a position that are going to help us justify a queen sacrifice, Sean? I think uh, king safety and peace coordination. I, are you are you the grandmaster here? Well, we know neither one of us is actually the grandmaster here, so. But uh, I'll send you your title in the mail. All right, very good. That's exactly I think what you're looking for. After queen to d3, knight g5 check, king f5, it starts to get really tricky, and and we see that this king is is walking up the board maybe a little farther than he's comfortable with. Oh, he's been invited in for lunch. Yeah, he's uh, he's been invited to dinner here, and I I don't know that he's going to be very happy with the uh, with the main course. So after h4, it starts to look really messy. We start to see threats of e4 check, and if the king doesn't find a safe square, does he have to keep coming forward? And does, is that going to lead to more checks? Well, in the game, after queen to e2, e4 check, king to g4, White did exactly what he should do in this scenario, which is make sure if you're going to go king hunting, you bring all your ammunition. And he plays bishop to c1, another, I think, worthy of an exclam move, brings wow. a piece back onto the side of the board where he's going to be most useful. Also, what's funny is that you may think this bishop move disconnects the rooks, but what do you see in this position for White that might suggest maybe that's not the end of the world for White? Well, he can move his uh, rook up maybe to a3. Very good. That's an elevator right there. You hop on the mm -hmm. elevator, and just like that, you may have all your pieces going after the king anyway. And so obviously black sees this idea and plays rook to c3, and now the question is exactly what white should have done. Unfortunately for white in this game, the alimony was too much after parting with the misses, and he couldn't quite <laughs> keep a clear head. White misses the brilliant and vicious way to end the game if he had played the move knight takes h7. Knight takes h7 not only clears the g5 square for a different piece, but it creates immediate threats that don't otherwise exist involving these checks because now there is an idea of bringing this bishop into the attack. The game might have continued something like king takes h4, bishop g5 check, and now we get to see the really exciting finish Kismatulin could have played with king h2. So exciting. Uh -huh. He's actually going to be bringing the rooks to the h and g files, clearing the way. And now look what could have happened. Bringing the king back to f1 to make sure both rooks have a chance to get involved in this king assault. And after check, check, it's going to be too much for the black king to hold everybody off. And this is enough material. I think, uh, I think Sean, I think you could win this game right here against Daniil Debo. What do you think about that? Absolutely. Absolutely. No doubt in my could. mind. And uh, unfortunately, Mr. Kismatulin was not able to come up with the winning idea. He played bishop e3, and if you want to see the rest of the game, you're going to have to check it out. Go ahead and look at Peter Dogger's news report and uh, and see how this one finished, but not part of the move of the week topic. On that note, we're actually going to jump over and talk to Mr. Peter Doggers about what the most current topics are trending in the chess world today, and we're going to see Sean in just a few moments on the other side of that segment to look at the blunder of the week, the worst move of the week. Sean, how do you feel about Kiss Matulin's D takes e6 here? Get you going? Oh, it does. That's awesome. And uh, I'm excited about the blunder of the week because that's really my area of expertise. <laughs> <laughs> we'll buckle up because we'll be right back, everybody.